Look nice at one. that. You know, nice it's been seven years, you know, it's been seven years since we've been here, which is hard to believe. But we met up with our boy Julio. We got the whole local knowledge crew in town, and we're stoked to be back in Abreu. One big one, big one, big one, bottom. <laughs> Get him, Rachi. I hope when you invite me to oh. Key West, you put me on fish like this, okay? Woo! Look at that fish, wow. Julio, <laughs> my man. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in Just the world. Just another day at the office? My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz, Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. When I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tuna. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to Wahoo! see. Woo! That's the one! We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. If you were looking for Abre and La Bocana, get your Google Earth out, zoom in on the corner of Baja there, right at the elbow, one of them being Estero La Bocana and the other one being Estero Coyote, and you'll see those two Esteros. It might not be labeled, but trust me, it's there and it's worth the work. Un segundito nomás para rimar las maletas y subirlas todas rápido para que nos dé raite ahí. Por favor, un segundito. Looks like we're going to jump in this lobster boat and get a ride out to our uh, chariot. Those Esteros are the heartbeat of this area. Without them, there is no grouper. The Esteros give those baby fish a place to grow up in protection. And as we've seen, there's a lot of them in there. Mucho, take it easy. <laughs> what do we got? What do we got, Rutch? It was digging for them rocks. Oh, it looks brown. Oh, if it's oh, brown, it's it down. Brown. Oh, little grouper, another little golfy. Look at you. Look at that. I mean, seriously, when you think about, oh, I'm not getting my hand. That lure is so much scarier than any fish. These grouper have to come from somewhere. You know, where are all these grouper come from? I mean, the bottom just littered with grouper everywhere. And what feeds this fishery is the two Esteros. They are basically nurseries. I wonder what size it is when they move offshore. These baby grouper grow up to a certain size and then they move offshore to these rock piles and that's where they forage for food and that's where they live. And grouper generally are territorial. So I'm gonna assume that if they find a rock pile that they like, they might move around a little bit from rock pile to rock pile, but they're pretty much gonna live and grow up in the same areas. That's a bass, isn't it? The spotty, yep, another species though. Very familiar with these guys. San Diego Bay is littered with them. I do not like all these hooks. No, why not? Because one of them's gonna find its way in my hand. The other reason that the Estero is so important is the surf. This is the west coast of Baja. It's directly open to the Pacific Ocean. You're sort of in this zone where if you didn't have the protection of the Estero to set up your fish camp, put your boats in and out of the water, you know, set up your pens to keep your seafood fresh, you're out of business. The Esteros are truly the lifeline of this area. Don't call it a comeback. We got another golfie. Oh, grouper hole. You know what we need is some beers. Sit out here and do this all day. What you got there, buddy? I don't even know, dude. Oh, oh Corvina. Corvina. God, what a great fishery back here. Just come back, get out of the wind, you know. Do some ultimate mixed, mixed bag. Make a hundred casts, probably catch 50 fish. Yep, no, this, this is awesome back here. Unbelievable. Like I said, man, you'd be a kid in here, just get lost all over again. I'm gonna let this guy go. Yeah, let him go, they're kind of fragile. He didn't look fragile, did no, he? No, he didn't. I mean, he's doing okay. He's ready, he's ready to get home. Julio, they're over here. Hold on, hold on. Watch your head, watch your head. Okay, a little more. Neutral. Oh, 
Bait is everything. I don't care if you're using dead bait to troll with. It's how you prepare that bait. It's how you brine that bait. You want that bait to be the freshest, best looking bait, toughest bait you could possibly have. So I really think we need a, a little bit of a mix. You know what I mean? If we get the fish eating really good, I think, you know, you fire that big bait down while they're fired up. And maybe that big girl will come and find them and hammer it. You know what I mean? I will feel way more confident besides having those horse mullet, let's just see if we can get another load of those smelts. Maybe you can even find some bigger ones. You know, back home it's no different. I'll spend hours chasing bait around to get a few hours of good fishing. Coming full of big mackerel. No way, no way. Keep getting those. Start chumming with something, Julio. Oh, one fell off. Bait makes our world go round. Oh my gosh, that's gold. Baja Gold. Oh, this is the best bait we could ask for right now. It's not a matter of going and finding the fish. You, you know the fish are out there. It's a matter of finding the bait and having the right bait. Let's do it. We got a tank full of, of giant mullet, horse mullet. We need this size today. Go, go bigger. A little bit more. How about right that? There. Let's go. Okay. Stretch them. You got you got the spot for the big ones or what? Yeah, we do have a few. Yesterday we fished a, a couple of hours, so we just fished one spot, but there is many spots here holding big fish. One of my favorite places to fish in Baja California is Abriojos and Bocana. Those areas are very well cared, well maintained, and the amount of fish, the amount of trophy fish that they hold there is amazing. Got him, got him, got him! Stop! Oh, fire! First, first one. Julio, get this guy! Yeah. Pop, 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 pop! Oh, wow, that's a big one. Good one. Ah, oh, he's not good. First, go and feel the trip. Oh. Baby. <laughs> Suck that mullet down, didn't he? Ooh. Oh, good. Got him. Look at that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Look at this, dude. <laughs> Golfy. Golfy. Golf grouper. Different flavor. Yeah. That's what we came Hold for. Hold your man. fish, buddy. Look nice at one. that. That's a nice dude. way to start the day. First yeah. fish. I'll take it, won't you? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. That's a good warm up. I guess those dates aren't too big. All right, guys, let's put this guy back in the water, send him back to his home. I think over the years, Julio's really built a trust, especially, you know, with the cooperativas here. This is Julio's playground. He loves it here. He's earned the respect of these guys and he's earned their confidence. And when Julio, you know, tried to explain to him, look, you can only kill a grouper once. You can catch and release that grouper a bunch of times. Get him, Raj, get him. Oh, you got him, you got him, you got him, you got him. Low gear, low gear, low gear, low gear. <sighs> nice Woo! one. Look at beautiful, that broom, beautiful. Son. I don't know how beautiful. good he's hooked. Beautiful. I see the hook. I see the hook. No problem. You're nice, Rutchy. Nice. I'll pull my eyeballs out. <laughs> oh, yeah, you look like you're going to die. <laughs> oh, I really believe everybody here got behind it when they realized that, wow, I could take somebody out five times and catch these grouper. And they're still there. Dude. Look at that. Look at that. Got it, Julio. That, that's made all cool. that bait and everything <laughs> worthwhile. What cast net. Look at that, dude. Look at that. I mean, there's just nothing else like that fight. Nothing. Oh, it's a beautiful fish. That's what group of fishing's all about, getting work. Yeah, I know. So that's what makes it so much fun. What a fight, dude. What a fish, dude. Hey, I had that thing on straight lockdown. Terminator. You go back to areas because they're good to fish. There's great fishing there. That's what brings people back. The only way to do that is to manage and protect the resource. Big one, big one, big one, big one, bottom. <laughs> Get him, Rachi. It's the bottom, he's it's in. It's in the bottom. <laughs> Julio was able to show these people the path to releasing the path to conservation and the the intrinsic value of that fish much beyond a couple of fillets that are long forgotten i hope when you invite me to oh. key west you put me on fish like this okay Woo! i don't know if i could do that julio <laughs> it's another nice one 
Nice one. Another broomtail. This is what I love right here. Broom. Look at that. Look at that. There's my hand for reference. <laughs> Abriojos is, in my opinion, and those in the know, it's a grouper capital of the world. Oh, you got him, you got him, you got him, big one! I can't think of yeah, anywhere yeah, else yeah. you can go and catch a dozen to 20 fish, 25 fish a day, quality fish. We're talking about 15 to 100 pound groupers, and when it's biting, it's as fast as you can get a bait in the water. Look at that. Dude, you're on fire, brother. Nice. <laughs> Man. That was on a sardine there. Yeah, I saw you fish that big old sardine that we made inside, huh? And that's, you know what I mean? That's why you want to have a variety of bait. Oh, no you know, question. If, it's not, if they're not eating one thing, they might be eating another. No and question. And it's just good to be mixing it up all day long. Back to your rock, buddy. We're going to need my pet. All right. Whew. Let's so start the fight. Get so a little bite going here, boys. Keep at it. The cooperativas down here at Abreojos and La Bocana are really the gold standard for Mexico. These guys figured out long ago with proper management, they have a resource here that will feed them, their kids, their grandkids, and generations to come as long as you manage it. And that has never been more true or evident in the case of the lobsters. They have a very good program of conservation not just for the groupers, but also for the abalone and lobster, and uh, that sustain the whole town, that sustain the education, the health, the services of the community through products of the sea that they harvest. But now doing a good job on grouper conservation, so that makes this area, for me, the best place in the world to fish groupers. That's him. Oh, you, oh yes, yes, sir. There you yes, go. Sir. That's, a good one. That's a good one. Dude, you are on fire. <laughs> I cannot get a bite. <sighs> nice job. Nice job. So nice. similar to our grouper back home. The face, everything. Beautiful Even the coloration. Oh, I love yeah. it, man. This is some of my favorite fishing right here, Julio. You have Thank a... You. God dang it. You have an awesome <laughs> fishery. I just Thank got you. plucked on the Thank way Thank you, Regal. Oh. oh. <laughs> you know, they figured, it, they figured it out down here, right? That these fish are worth more alive than dead. Exactly. You know, we say it all the time. You can only kill them once. But to come back and be able to catch them time after time, I mean, it's priceless. Yeah, but look, these guys are smart, you know? How much money do you guys spend to come here and do this fishing, you know? How much money do you draw, do you live in the community, you know? I mean, eating groceries, stuff like that, you know? I mean, I mean, uh, using the, uh, uh, the cooperativa restaurant, all that stuff, you know? So that's what they want, you know? Customers will respect and spend money here and support the, the community, you know? I fish for grouper a lot back home. I mean, we do a lot of bottom fishing. Even, even when we're fishing on the surface, we wrote, we're always putting a line down on the bottom because we have those options. You can fish for multiple species at the same time. But to come out here and see a grouper fishery like this, where you're catching these grouper in these numbers of these sizes, is just unbelievable. And in this shallow of water, I mean, you're catching 50 pound grouper in 35 foot of water. That just doesn't happen anywhere in the States anymore. Oh, time to change up the mojo here, Julio. Oh, I cannot get bit. And you're using that 250? 200, or whatever we were hit, whatever was right there. The whatever, heavy stuff. Whatever this is right here. I cannot freaking get a bite. You know, Julio is one of the guys. I mean, the banter, like, I'm sitting there, got the hot hand, catching fish after fish. Ali's on a bad, bad cold streak, and Julio is just giving it to Ali. I mean, giving it to him. Can't keep a good man down. Do we have a chance to be in the show? I hope so, Julio. I hope so. I'm bet. Oh, ho, ho! 
You have got to be kidding me, dude. I mean, at one point, I think I saw a little tear coming down Ali's cheek. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. That's a good this? one. It is. You know, it's all fun, it's all great, and Julio couldn't be a better host. Dude, you are on fire. <laughs> that was a good one. It is. Oh, made my eyes pop out. I was hoping to be in this show, but I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> Oh, nice. Let's see that one. <laughs> Bigger than the first one, Julio, or no? Yeah. Look at that fish. Wow. Julio. My man. Nice. Oh, such a rad fish. Julio, what do you say we let this guy go? Release. Send him to the Garropera. Catch him, catch him again another day, right? Yes. That's what this place is all about. Exactly. Whoa! Look at how they swim away. <laughs> like yes, nothing. Yes, yes. All right. How about I get you? This sucks. At the end of the day, the adventure, the travel, the, the people, all that stuff is great. But we're here for one reason, and that's to catch grouper. Well, boys, what do you think? One more spot? This is it. Let's do it. Do or die. I see you on the scoreboard. Julio, last one. Uh, you hit one more, buddy. You got a grouper that, here for your boy? The last one. You got a grouper here for Ali? Yeah, I think so. Many. It better many. be good, buddy. Many. I like, it. I like his chances. I like his chances. That sinker has got to be dancing on the bottom right there. That line has to be tight out there, and you have to feel that bait moving around. Why? Because your number one indicator that you're gonna get bit is that bait getting nervous. Big one! That's the one we need. Get him, Rock. Woohoo! Big one. Now we always refer to grouper as freight train, but you've never felt a freight train like that until you've tried to stop one in 35 foot of water from going into a rock. Not my biggest, but different species, I think, buddy. Yeah, that's right. right. It's a golf. The golfie, you've been looking for him. Yes. Only the second one of the trip, huh? Dude, my boy cannot miss today. What a day, huh? Dude, just this place is magic. So, check out the fins. See how they're rounded, uh, don't yeah. come to a point. Yeah. See spotty and more or less blotchy. Uh -huh. I mean, that's how you can really tell them apart. But the biggest telltale is the tail, right? The tail, well, yeah, at this size though, it can be hard. Oh, really? Because the smaller golf or smaller broom tails are not gonna have really much of a broom. The, really? the shape of the, of the fins is how I can really tell. Yeah, the fin around and then on the broom tail, it's, it's, uh, it, it ends in a point. Comes to a point on yeah. them, even on the small fish. I do enjoy being sporty about fishing. I want to see the lightest gear I can catch a big fish on. The reason we like the smaller reels versus the international is we can really palm that reel and you always stand in contact with your bait. It just gives you a better position to strike. We're holding that reel all day long on our palm, feeling that spool, giving it some line, taking some line and just waiting for that boom, feed them for a two count, slam the handle up and hold on. Oh, get, him, get, get, him, him, get him, get him, get him, get him. He's back here in a freaking rock. Get him. There is not a lot of margin for error when you're fishing that shallow. When you get bit, there's a super fine line between letting that fish eat and letting him get back into his living room way up underneath the rock. Looks like it. He didn't fight like it though. It is. Grouper? Yeah. Oh. Nice. Nice, Ali. Finally, finally <laughs> broke the slump. Man, I cannot thank you enough for having us down here again and sharing this with us. Thank you. This is thank absolutely awesome. It's an awesome fish. The stuff you're doing down here to protect this fish is absolutely amazing. They do a great job. Let's let this guy go. I thought I heard something about, you hear something about lobster and steak? Abalone. I Abalone. heard all, I mean, I heard a seafood buffet going on <laughs> back at the camp. I think we better let this guy go and get to business. What do you think? Let's do it. Vominous.
You know, I can't believe it's been seven years since we got back down here, and that's definitely something I'm gonna personally correct in the future, with or without the crew. And I just wanna take a second to thank both of the cooperativas. They make this all possible. They protect this fishery so we can enjoy it. They facilitate our trips down here. You know, all of the guys that make Julio's program work. These guys, I mean, you can't say enough about them. Whether it's the pilot that flew us down, Luis, you know, Rigo, who's kind of our guide. You got Pescadito, who's kind of the fixer and gets stuff done. And then you got the La Bocana boys, Wanchi, Joaquin. I mean, they're really what keeps us coming back and they're really what makes this possible. And I just appreciate it so much. I'm so glad I can share this with my buddies. I'm glad I can share this with our audience. It's just a special place. And if you ever get the chance, jump on it.